Hey guys, I had a question the other day, what do I run in my backpack when I'm riding my bike? So I thought I'd do a quick video and uh, show you what I run. Um, I don't do any dual sport stuff, so I'm not away more than one day. So it's fairly light, uh, you can see there in the background obviously. Um, first thing first, the backpack. Um, tried a couple of different brands, uh, hydration packs and whatever. This Australian made Zack Speed pack now I think three years old um, all of the zips still work um, none of the straps have failed none of the clips have failed and it's been brilliant um, the zips when they do up have uh, a rubber lip that seals the zip um, like I said all the catches are still in first class order and I'll be updating soon to a new pack this one's called the Sprint R3 um, they have uh, various attachments these shoulder straps are removable from the inside of the pack, you unzip from inside and there's a ladder system inside the pack where you can uh, change the front. So I'm actually going to get a rally pack front because I'm doing a fair bit of photography stuff now with the drone and so forth and I've got, it'll have a vest on the front with pockets. Um, you can also get uh, body armour, I don't tend to wear it, we don't do a lot of high speed stuff. Um, more single track so I just like the fresh air on my chest. Um, so yeah, I'll be upgrading, but uh, that's the only reason. This son, uh, my son will be taking over this pack. There's nothing wrong with it, and it's been a brilliant thing. So um, quite large openings, pockets on the sides. Obviously storage in here, separate storage pouch. The hydration pack fits in there with a uh, Velcro strap to hold the top of it. Um, it also has another pocket on the outside for mobile phones and small items, soft items on the outside. So The hydration pack that comes with it has this uh, sliding top closure. Um, you can take that right off and you can get your hand right down inside it to clean it if you need to. Um, it has a quick release hose that seals when you remove it. And um, yeah, it's been a great thing. Um, it's just starting to peel in the corner now after three years of use. So I run about two litres in it. Um, three litres is pretty heavy, obviously three kilos on your back. Six pounds if you're in the States, that's a fair weight, plus all your other tools. So I run about two litres, I find that's enough for me for our rides, about four or five hours. Um, so yeah, that's uh, been a great thing. Um, the other thing, just a quick tip with your hydration pack, if you flush it out straight away when you come home, dry it or you know, shake the most of the water out of it and stick it in the freezer. You won't have any mould or whatever you built up in the hoses and the bag when you go to fill it next time. So you can pull it straight out of the freezer, fill it up, put it in your bag and ride. So yeah, you don't have to clean it every time. So on to tools. I run a selection of spanners. Um, some of these you don't need for the Husqvarna but I end up being trail mechanic for everyone else so I take full selection 19 millimetre right down to 6mm, I think the brake bleeder on the Husky's 6mm from memory. A um, couple of special spanners I've made up. You can see this 8mm, if I'll compare it to the one next door. Try and get them to sit up there with one hand while I hold the camera. There you, go. you can see the bend on the end. I've bent the tip of the top spanner further in. That allows me to get up under the frame to do the bolt on the gear shift. I don't need to need to carry a long socket and extension and a ratchet or anything. I can actually get to the um, gear shift bolt with that spanner. And I team it up with a ring spanner through the jaw to get good leverage on it. And um, that gets me out of trouble. So I have once had to remove the gear shift out on the trail and that saved me. I've also had to tighten it up a couple of times. Um, so yeah. Selection of spanners, I keep a small shifter, just uh, back up if I lose one of the spanners or whatever I've got something that'll fit. Uh, Multi-adjustment pliers, uh, just a cheap set, they've actually come out of a Toyota tool bag, an old car that was being wrecked. This one's a special, this is a 12mm Allen key that I cut the end off the handle. I just found this uh, press on washer and uh, what that allows me to do with a 12 mil spanner I can then undo my front axle nut put the spanner on there um, yes you could carry the great big long heavy complete allen key if you wanted or 
a 12 millimeter socket and a driver for it, a ratchet or a handle or whatever, but they're going to be heavy. This is nice and lightweight. I've already got a 12 mil spanner and that uh, allows me to re remove the front wheel if I need to. Um, other tools, obviously a set of Allen keys. Um, again, you don't need every one of those for the Husqvarna. You could probably go around the bike if you like and choose them one at a time and keep the ones you want. I keep the whole set, obviously helping out other people. Um, no, I don't clean my teeth on the trail. Um, it's handy to have a toothbrush to, if you need to pull something important off the bike to have a look at a problem. Um, clean the dirt away first and then you don't drop dirt inside your gearbox or your stator cover or whatever you've taken off out on the trails. Again, another SKP from a cheap car toolbox or tool bag. Double-ended Phillips open-ender screwdriver. Um, they're not the greatest quality, but out on the trails they get you out of trouble. You can adjust your forks with the flat end and obviously you've got the Phillips end for any of the screws. I was carrying for a long time this Torx bit which suited the TPS sensor. I was fiddling with that out on the trails and messing around before I was able to tune it properly. So I actually don't need that one anymore, but I just found it in the bottom of the bag. Um, I keep this uh, socket handle and 8mm socket for doing any of the, the um, fasteners and the plastics. Uh, makes it a lot easier. Um, and I carry a spare gear shift with me. This is my previous one. I took it off when it was getting a bit worn and it was a little bit loose. Um, that will get me home if I strip, bend, snap my gear shift. Um, yeah, I had a, a fall one time up the beach where it dug into the sand and uh, cracked through the, the back here. I was able to limp it home, but I, you know, I didn't have a good day. It was early in the ride and I basically had to carefully um, look after my gear shift for the rest of the ride. Uh, these guys here, made by RHK, are brilliant. Um, obviously they're tyre spoons at one end. You've got the with this insert, 27mm socket for the rear axle and uh, as luck would have it, this ends 12mm so I could actually, or on the inside, sorry, it's 10mm one side, 12mm the other, I can actually drive my socket Allen key for the front wheel. Moving over to additional stuff, I've got a first aid kit here, it's a basic kit, it's got a couple of bandages in it, some band-aids, um, some Panadol, and uh, we also carry a cigarette lighter with us. Um, we've had cause, unfortunately, twice now to call a helicopter on some of our rides. We've had a couple of guys injure themselves and the conditions where we were, uh, the helicopters couldn't actually see us from the air. So um, we were able to light a little signal fire out of some green leaves and whatever, and they were able to spot the column of smoke. So, you know, you might find yourself in the bush, run out of fuel and a cold day you might want to light a little fire. It's obviously not advisable to light fires in the forestry but in an emergency you know, we've got that ability there. Um, electrical tape worth its weight. Um, I don't always carry duct tape. I have uh, had that in there for a couple of rides. Um, spare fuses. Have a look at the fuses. Uh, the fuses on your bike and get some spares in your bag but for you know 25 cents worth of fuse, you might be stuck in the bush. Um, these are various ones that fit other guys' bikes that come with us. Uh, I carry a little tyre gauge with me. This one's a little cheap one from a service station. Um, originally had a magnet on the back and you're supposed to stick it on your fuel door. It's not super accurate, but I worked out where the markings were inaccurate off my good gauge at home. So I know that this gauge, when it reads uh, 10, it's actually got 12 in the tyre. Um, so I've got a master gauge at home, a good one. So that gets me out of trouble on the trails. Zip ties. Can never have too many zip ties. Um, I've seen guys ride home with tyres held onto the rim with zip ties wrapped around. Works a treat. Um, to that end, on the Husqvarna's, unless you've put a bung in there, the steering stem is open and you can slide a pack of zip ties down inside the steering stem with, the, uh, with them all zip tied together. So. It's a nice little hidey hole. I carry this cheap tube patch kit, a little bit of electrical tape to keep it all together, but it's got enough stuff there just to patch a tube if that gets you home. Um, again,
again, not a lot of weight in it, doesn't take up a lot of room and might save the ride. Um, on the new Sherco I'm riding, I'm running a tubeless system, so I shouldn't need this patch kit any longer. But um, yeah, on the, on the Husky rides, that's what I take with me. A selection of various nuts and bolts, including at least one sprocket bolt. We've, I've had more, I've had to give a couple away to guys, but yeah, nothing worse than having a sprocket come loose on a ride and you've got nothing to put back in there. So yeah, good selection of nuts and bolts, just in a Ziploc bag. A little bit weighty, does add to the pack, but yeah, it'll save you at the end of the day. Uh, moving on to other stuff. I carry clear safety glasses with me for unexpected rainy days. Again, not heavy, don't take up a whole heap of room. But when your goggles are fogged up, nothing worse than riding in the rain with no goggles, getting hit in the eyes with rocks and mud and stuff off the guys in front. Um, these at least stop your eyes getting hit. Uh, doesn't keep the rain out of your eyes, but at least you can see where you're going. Um, Ziploc bag for your phone and any spare batteries for cameras or whatever, obviously. Uh, keeps them separated from everything else. Um, and goggle rags, a um, lot of different ways of carrying those. I just fold these up, put them in my backpack. But um, for the workshop and for the bike, these Caterpillar rags are very cheap. Um, most places around the world will have a Caterpillar dealer not far from where you are. And I think here in Australia, these boxes cost me $12 for 100 paper rags and they're real good quality, nice and clean. I use them on engine work and you know, all around the workshop. So yeah, just a brief run through. That's the sort of gear I carry. As I said, it's only a day trip. Um, obviously you'd need more if you were, you know, heading out on a couple of days ride. Um, but you know, for a day trip, that's as much as we carry and it gets us out of trouble, gets us home. Um, you may wish to carry a tube. Um, the Husqvarna's Got a well-shaped front mudguard here for a spare tube. Um, if you're only going to carry one, carry a 21-inch front tube. Uh, that way you can cover the front wheel and you can fold them and get you home. The 21-inch will fold up enough and still inflate an 18-inch rear to get you home, usually. So, uh, yeah, that's about really all I could suggest. That and a little pump, uh, which I can't find. I've actually got a small sports store pump. Um, fits in the side pocket of my bag here and uh, yeah, it's easy, quick, cost me about $10 from a local sports store. Righto, enjoy the trails guys, catch you later.